Right learners, good day and welcome to today's video where I am looking at the phase three of the um, pet. Here we go. This is the Sakai grade 12 pet. Now I've done phase one and two. So let's have a look at what we need to do in phase three. And okay, they go through everything as per normal. Just want to go to the top here quickly and see where we are. So in our phase three, we should be looking at our report, which is a Word document, our website. That's remember, these are folders. And then you need to do this final declaration. Now, I know it's usually an addendum. So let's just go through. And that's phase one. Here we go. For phase three, what do they want us to do? And they want us to create a final report. So we are creating a Word document. Your report needs to be on average around six to eight pages. You need to have a cover page, an automatic table of contents, an introduction. So that will be like what you did in phase one, your task definition, something like that. Discussion and, and analysis, what you found out. Remember, you, you were researching something. So... You'll show everything there, then your findings. What did you find as a result of maybe asking that particular question? You need a conclusion as well, a list of references, and then the appendices as required. Now, you can see they go through in detail what they want on the cover page, the automatic table of contents, the introduction. So please read all of this. The discussion, yeah, they say you need at least three headings. The headings used should be the same as the headings in phase one. Information relevant to the headings must be grouped under these headings. Remember that table that you did in phase one, right? That should be in there um, in your discussion. Include information from your research, include graphics, your findings. You need to formulate three appropriate claims, arguments, or findings. Three things you found out. Three claims you are making as a result of finding out certain information. And then a conclusion which is meaningful, so not like just, you know, one sentence. You also need um, in your list of references a bibliography and a table of figures because you're obviously putting figures in uh, or pictures and you are labeling those with captions. So then you are going to pull in a table of figures and then make use of proper referencing using Harvard or APA. Now, please remember when you are doing this and you are busy with your references here in your citations and bibliography, there's the style, right? APA, Harvard, it's all there. Okay, then please go through this. They just mentioned a couple of guidelines here as well. And then you want to save your report into the phase three folder. They then carry on, they talk about the website. So you need to create a website which will present or convey the information in your report. So basically taking your report and turning that into a website, right? It doesn't have to be everything, but um, you need to be able to convey the same info as well. Okay, um, they just go through, images must be relevant, cropped, nothing broken, there should be an alt tag for all images so bear that in mind proper navigation in other words hyperlinks should work if i click on a button that says you know next page or top of the page it should all work um your formatting appearance background colors should all be the same you know just generally professional formatting okay and then again it's just the report and the website that you are really um, submitting for phase three. So remember in phase one, we were looking at our research, what we are researching, how we are going to go about it. Phase two is where we were now getting everything back. We were now beginning to process everything. And then phase three is where you present the final conclusion to this. You can see here, okay, in next year A, that was an example of a questionnaire. These are all in your document. As you can see, this one document that I'm going through, this is the declaration. So here you can see this will have to be, 
usually printed and signed because you as the learner need to sign, the teacher needs to sign as well, and this needs to be with um, your pet that you submit. So you can see you've got your phrase one, two, three, learner's name, ID, the teacher, the year, all of this info, but that's what needs to be completed. And then lastly, I just want to go through the phase three rubric. Again, all of this is in the document. So let's go through and see. Right, so we get three marks for adding a cover page, for adding the name and surname, name of the school, topic, and a meaningful abstract. I mean, that's three marks for doing hardly anything. Then you report. Just because your report has readable fonts, not more than two fonts are used, appropriate line spacing and paragraph spacing is used, and there's no spelling and grammar mistakes, you get four marks, regardless of everything else. If you've met those requirements, you'll get those marks. Headings. Um, headings stand out, heading styles are used, and different levels of headings are present. Three marks. Navigation is, does your automatic table of contents work? Do you have other tables like a table or figures? Do you have page numbers? Do you have hyperlinks that work? If you have that, you'll get your four marks. Do you see now, just for putting this formatting in place, that's three, that's seven, that's 10, that's 14 marks. Then your introduction, for having that, that's another four marks. Your body, at least three appropriate headings relevant to the investigation, and the information grouped under those headings, that's two marks. Then, appropriate data and information used from phases one and two. So showing what you've done in phase one and two. Information in your own words, please, no plagiarism. Please, all graphics are relevant, that's three marks. For your findings, remember those um, three findings that you need? You're going to have four marks up for grabs for that. Your conclusion, even if it's like three sentences, you know, just a short paragraph, you get four marks for that if it meets, and again, if it meets these criteria. And then no plagiarism, everything is all right, you get four marks. And uh, for your references as well, and that's how you get a total of 38 marks. Now, your website, same story. Guys, phase one and phase two, they do exactly the same in phase three. General aspects, general appearance, does everything look good? There's four marks up for grabs for that. Well organized, maybe you've used some special techniques like lists and tables. Uh, maybe you were adding some graphics, no broken links, everything's been thought through. Um, the navigation is good, like, like we said, there's... You know, everything works. You're high, you click on a hyperlink, it takes you to where you need to go. Click at the bottom to go to the top, it works. And then lastly, um, the site has good info using good language, no spelling and grammar mistakes, and that's how you get your other 23 marks. Now also bear in mind you have this general evaluation. And you can see this is a total of 15 marks. So what are we getting marks for? The learner works or independently identifies his or her focus area and produces effective planning. They show clear evidence of detailed critical investigation, identifies or fully explores and addresses problems, selects and uses a range of skills. So um, this is going to be ultimately in your teacher's hand. They are going to be seen um, as to where you fit in and giving you the relevant marks. That's up to 15 marks. So if you look here, you'll see now phase one, 33 marks, phase two, 41, phase three comprises of your report and website. So that's the 38 and the 23 and the general as well. And that gives you a total of 150 marks. Okay, remember your pet um, should still count for 25% of your final year mark. So guys, I hope you are doing your absolute best when it comes to the pet to get all the marks that you possibly can. And um, yeah, all the best for this and your finals.